Hello, welcome to another video from Avenue X looking at Chinese Dropland in the past week. First, I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has supported me on Coffee, Ko-Fi and purchased my icon pack of Tanglanjue. I'll try to do more of this type of things in the future. Now let's go and talk about dramas. Let's start with dramas that have gone live. Chronologically, on September the 26th, a drama went live on satellite television, also online, pretty much airdropped, called Fei Teng Yuan Sheng. It doesn't have an English title, so it is called Fei Teng Yuan Sheng as well on drama list. The drama is led by Han Dongjun, Kan Xingzi. It is a mid-1980s setting drama of a group of young people going to a nationally owned machinery factory and designing trucks. I haven't had time to check it out yet. Then on the 29th, so yesterday, as opposed to today, I'm filming this video. A drama went live on Youku as predicted before because I said this drama is unlikely to not come out soon. And it did. Shida falling into you, the athlete and coach drama, also a Nianxia drama, meaning the younger guy and older lady. This drama is only 26 episodes and they're gonna air the first 15 or so episodes continuously, led by Jing Chen and Wang An Yu. So far, it's pretty satisfying. Apart from the visually, they just overdo, okay? Overdo the lighting, glowing effect. Everybody is just shimmering with lights. It's ridiculous, the look of it. I have no idea why they're doing it. And it's a totally post-production dumb thing. You can totally not do it with your raw footage that's shot in raw. I don't understand what is the problem. Then, uh, one day after that, so today, as I'm making this video, a drama has just gone live on Aichi'i. And <laughs> it feels like it's so in competition with every other romantic dramas, particularly the Youku ones that are ongoing. It's led by Chen Zheyuan and Shen Yue. Mr. Bad, the fan Pai Nan Yo, a writer who used to write fan fictions, started to write her own novel, and in her own novel, she has a bad guy written in a period time, and this character somehow jumps out of the book, enters her reality, and starts to give her trouble. Definitely a comedy heavy romantic story. I will go and check it out. Chen Zhuyuan has done that type of role also on Aichi a couple of years ago. Still one of my favorite that type of theme drama. Dear Ancestor, where that one is time travel, this one is book travel to reality. So let's hope this is a fun and comedy heavy drama. At least the trailer gives you that impression. Then just before I sat down making this video, there was a drama that has released its first trailer during this week. It's a Tencent drama. And then like five hours before I sat down, they announced they are gonna go live online on the 1st of October, Chinese National Day. Wu Yun Yu Jiao Yue, My Deepest Dream. We've talked about this production multiple times since last year when it was filming. It's a contemporary drama led by Li Yitong and Jing Han. It's about two people meeting on a like ocean liner on a vacation, and then they realized something is not working properly in their universe. Once they've met, time, space start to warp, they're time traveling, they're space traveling, they're changing past, changing future. Uh, so this is a what we call contemporary fantasy type of drama that they will introduce those supernatural elements but it's set in contemporary time and mostly it's a romantic story the trailer looks pretty interesting so i have one more drama that i need to check out <sighs> love my life those are the dramas that have aired or have announced when they're gonna air then let's move on to talk about productions at other stages. First, during this week, there is drama that has released its trailer, Nan Feng Zhi Wo Yi, South Winged Knows My Mood. We've also talked about this project before, contemporary drama, led by Cheng Yi and Zhang Yuxi, and this is a Huan Rui drama, and they are Huan Rui actors, so <laughs> no surprise here. That company has some of the worst reputations among all Chinese production companies these days. We do not know when this drama is going to go live. They just released the trailer. Moving on to the next thing. It's not a Chinese drama, but I thought I would just want to mention it. During this week, Netflix has released its trailer, first kind of trailer, or more like a promotional video, on their version of Three Body Problem. Most valuable Chinese sci-fi IP, I'd say, ever. And China is also making its own version television series. I've talked about that multiple times also on my channel. 
the Chinese version. So this is the Netflix version. Obviously, it's adapted by Netflix. They have to change nationality, race, all kinds of things of a lot of characters in the original novel. So a lot of Chinese people turned into not Chinese people in this version and they're not really telling you exactly who's who, so you can only guess. There are shots of certain people showing up in the Netflix trailer that was like, who is that person? Who can that be? Like it's like I can't remember a person like that exists in the original novel. So probably a heavy adaptation process and a lot of things got changed until it comes out. You know, you never know whether it's worth watching or good enough or whatever. The thing is with these two guys as the uh, producer or main adaptation creatives, if they keep their paws away from the actual script, then it may be more watchable if they meddle too much with the story. Dun, 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 you know what happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is still one of my deepest scars psychologically about an IP that got destroyed that I followed diligently for eight or nine years. Sorry, I never can have a good opinion about those two guys. Good luck to Netflix's free body problem and I also look forward to Chinese version coming out. It will be such an interesting comparative study if both dramas are released and you watch them side by side. If you're doing a degree in school of like whatever, comparative studies of anything, that's like your thesis. Then during this week, uh, a drama has wrapped, which is the Changxiang Si drama. <laughs> Lost you forever? Or I think they've also changed the title somewhere. You know which one it is. It's the Yang Zi, Tan Jian Si, Dong Wei, and who else? Zhang Wan Yi. Let Period fantasy female lead character one and then <laughs> just a group of guys circling around her drama. Yang Zi's comfort zone, the zone that she's been in for too long, everybody tries to pull her out but she still gets stuck in it, whatever. Drama has just wrapped during this week and they've released their wrapping special features, posters, videos, uh, looking just like any other that type of drama that she's done before. And then because it's a big paper drama, probably again, definitely over 40 episodes long. So you're not gonna see it until next year. Then another paper drama has finally started to move and it's been three years, I think. Da Song Shang Yan Zhi, Young Blood, the drama I think a lot of people really, really liked. That drama has finally, finally started to move. The second series, they've started shooting during this week. This time, five of them stayed the same actors. One got changed. So the guy who played Wei Yane in the first series now is moved to a new actor, Fu Wei Lun, who played He Jia Jia in Hikaru no Go. The actor himself, he's pretty fine and I think he can do the role well. It's just sad that they can't have the full original cast and <laughs> there's rumors about why. And it might be just a preemptive strategy for the production to avoid future, may come up political problems. Yeah, I'm not gonna go into details because this is a drama channel. Don't wanna touch any of the politics topics. Anyway, so this drama is gonna keep five of the original six cast members. Still, I'm looking forward to the second series and I hope it's a well-written, well-directed and this time maybe getting more money. But then cautiously optimistic. We've seen enough Chinese dramas that has second series and second seasons that Fs it up. And then quickly talk about the tiny piece of gossip which is during this week. The actor Zhang Linghe and the actress Bai Lu have been caught by paparazzi. She spent a couple of nights at his place. First, neither of them are idols in any way where, you, where they really just completely cash in on fandom and stuff. And then secondly, they've just been promoting the drama that hasn't aired yet but they've just wrapped shooting the Kunming Palace drama. And it's literally right after the release of their trailer. So it, it feels like it may be intentional or designed and whatever. But then, you know, even if it's just accidentally got caught on camera, you know, by paparazzi, so what? It's two adults. I think Zhang Linghe's Weibo account lost over 10,000 fans overnight because of this news. Okay, fine, you know, I guess you can do whatever you want, right, with their social media account, but I just don't see why people can get offended. It's like if he starts to date other people, then he doesn't deserve my attention anymore. But like, why do you feel so entitled to start with? It's not like if he's not dating other people, he would date you, you know? So I don't quite get the mentality of that, but hey, it does not matter. It's just one tiny, tiny piece of gossip. <laughs> to wrap up today's video, there are a couple of 
uh, other things regarding dramas and films that has happened in Chinese drama land. Number one is Gentlemen of the East Eighth Time Zone drama that I've mentioned at least four times now recently in other dramas videos just because of how stupid the drama is. It absolutely belittles the level of misogyny that you can see coming out of Donald Trump's mouth. I'm just gonna put it that way. That drama, every episode and every scene is stinking with it. So if it get reported too much and then that's the reason it got pulled down, I understand why that happens. But then later I'm gonna talk about that at the end of this. Okay, there are certain things I still don't quite agree with why this can happen. The other thing is a film that has been doing really well in cinema for over a month called In Ru Chen Yan Return to Dust. A very indie art house movie that's not supposed to get any mainstream attention. Somehow because of a lot of people promote it on their own that started this grassroots movement and making this film performs 10 times better at box office than expectation and then it suddenly just got pulled down everywhere from web from cinemas exactly why we do not know also in that category of things getting moved around and you never know why is the <laughs> film Chang Kung Zhu Wang that I've just been talking about last week and the week before Born to Fly the film led by Wang Yibo, Hu Jun, the pilot fighter jets film just announced during this week that they moved out of the national holiday slot and they haven't said when they're gonna come back the reason that the production gives you is they haven't fully really done the post-production they want to refine it more before they release it but we all know you know they have to find some kind of excuse for why you do this it's a quite big move and it costs money they've already started promoting it tickets have already been sold so now they have to cancel all that and that's a cost so they have to give you a reason but honestly is that the real reason most people wouldn't believe it so this week we've had like three things that either got taken Taken down or moved away to other time happening in entertainment in China and <laughs> you know the thing that's most annoying about these things is you just never get first a clear explanation of why it happens and then there's no rule books anywhere to follow you never quite know why certain things that has clearly already passed censorship otherwise they wouldn't be airing in the first place even when they are airing they can be taken down halfway they can finish airing get taken down they can be doing well and suddenly disappears and you never know why and these things is like can we just have a clear rule written out there so that people know you know what to follow and then what to expect <laughs> yeah obviously when you don't have that you can play with it however you like now you see why people would hold those ceremonies before they start a project and burn a lot of incense and very sincerely pray to heavens and whatever gods in charge of these things is please make sure this whole thing goes well anyway those are the things that's been happening in Chinese Romland uh, entertainment this week every time when I see these things happen I remind myself there are more shitty things going on in this world that is gonna affect more people in reality much worse than this this week we've had a couple of big things happening in this world hey politics energy okay <laughs> you already know what I'm talking about and those things happen you're just like oh as if we're not living in chaos already like you just want to make it worse the other day I was running through my account books and seeing how well I'm doing this year and I'm like ah, it's a miracle I'm still alive at this point <laughs> so if one day this channel disappears or if one day like I just stop updating uh, it could happen you know totally in this great time of uncertainty I hope everybody have a great weekend I'll see you in my next video meanwhile live long and happy drama watching